Welcome to 6-3. We're going to learn about u substitution. One of my favorite parts of calculus, actually. So when we take a derivative, you got an inside function, you got an outside function. The key here is to understand the difference between the inside function and that outside function. I'm trying to highlight them for you right now. So the derivative of the inside function would be, let's see, so if I was just doing the inside, I would say the derivative of 1 is 0, and the derivative of 5x is 5. Uh, I'm doing the derivative of the outside function. There's a power of 4, so I get a 4, and then um, that goes down to a power of 3. And keep in mind, the inside function didn't change at all. I already took the derivative of it. 0 plus 5 is just 5. So I have 5 times, ready, here's my 4 to the power of 3, and my 1 plus 5x. So I see then that I got 20 in front. All right. And the next piece, I take the derivative of all that inside business again, I still get that 5. And then I had the sine, and the derivative of sine is cosine. And remember that the inside doesn't change, okay? So now I have that. And again, I have a constant in front, and it's just a 5 this time because um, there was no power for the sine. So when he says integrate this, I'm wondering, do you recognize it? You know, do you recognize it? Look, there's my 5. There's my 5. There is everything else. There's everything else. The only thing I'm missing here is a 4. Um, on this guy, there's my 5. There's my 5. And there's my whole business, the cosine of 1 plus 5x. So let me actually do this one first because I think you know that the answer is that this is sine of 1 plus 5x. And I just antiderivative. I can do the antiderivative just directly because I just did the derivative. I know that this. I took the derivative of it, and I got that. Uh, I got that, and then I did it like that. I don't know if I said that right, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Now, number three, though, I can't. Hmm, I'm mad. You know, like I wanted there to be a four there. So let me see if I can't do this the way. I did in one of my last videos where I said, I wish that there was a 4 here. So I'm going to put a 4 here, and then I'm going to put the 5, and then I'm going to put the 1 plus the 5x, and that's cubed, and then a dx. And well, can you just add a 4? No, I cannot. I have to make sure that I'm actually adding a value of 1, and I'm doing this. 1 fourth times 4 ends up being 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. So I have the 1 on the inside, and I have the 1 on the outside. And now that I've done that, then yes, sure, I could totally find the antiderivative. The antiderivative, here's a 1 fourth, and then there's my original function right there, a 1 plus 5x to the power of 4. And that's what I must have had. Oh my goodness, plus a C, plus a C. All right, there you go. That's your answer. And I won't lie. I wish I had more room here. <laughs> Don't be mad. <laughs> I'm putting it over here. Uh, I, I won't lie. A lot of times I will be tempted to write this like this. Because I don't know. I just, my calculus teachers just think it looks nicer. It's just like you know the whole thing is being divided by 4. You know, when, when you get to it, you know, find you know, x, multiply stuff by 5, then add 1, then take it to the 4th power, then divide it by 4. I just think a lot of calculus teachers like the way it looks when it looks like that. All right, but either one of them is totally acceptable. You must insert the chain rule factor, which is the derivative of the inside function, in examples 1 and 2. So you had to delete the derivative of the inside function in examples 3 and 4. Each of the integration rules from the last lesson can now be generalized as the reverse chain rule integrals. And I discussed 
all of these in the last video, but you know you, what you saw was that I had yous in them, okay? I definitely had yous in them. And also, when I ask you guys to um, think of the you form, I, I, don't, I don't put in the you prime. What I do is I do the du. But these are essentially the same as what is on your mega cheat sheet, okay? Let me take a look at the mega cheat sheet real quick. Yeah, I like them with UDUs. That's how I like them. I think they, they make more sense this way. Uh, that if you have some sort of function, then you, you are integrating with respect to you. And when you're done, that inside function will be there. Now, if there was any kind of a constant, like we were missing a four, then you'll add it in naturally. Okay. So let's try a few of these then. And, um, if you look at his version, he's saying like, hey, there is a du. I mean, technically, you know that u prime is the same thing as a du, but he also has a dx. And like, well, wait a minute, what is that? And why is that? Well, it turns out sometimes when you do the u substitution, you don't have to go back to the to to the x term. You can actually just change things all the way into u's and leave them there. So I'm going to give you examples of that. You'll see it later. For now, just don't worry about it. It's just it's it's weird that there's a dx there, but you're you're going to be fine. We we aren't going to end up having to use it with an extra dx. All right, so I want to integrate stuff and I'm saying that I know what the derivative of the inside was. So the d dx of 3x minus 1 was supposed to be what the derivative of 3x is 3 and the derivative of negative 1 is 0. So I'm missing a 3. I sure wish I had it. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be nice if I had that 3? So I'm going to add it. So I have a 3 and an integral and I'm doing a 1 third here. And now I'm going to say that I have a 3x minus a 1 to the 10th power with a dx. And um, I also wish now, <laughs> are you mad at me? Because I was just thinking about how I wish that there was a piece of the derivative and it was there. Ooh, I was supposed to use two colors here. I apologize. So here we go. I was supposed to say that the purple is the chain rule piece. I'm inserting missing chain rule piece. Okay, and that's the purple piece. Although, dang it, it was supposed to be red. Okay, really, I got this now, I got this now. So then I want to do the antiderivative of 3x minus 1, which has something to the power of 10. And because my chain rule piece is present, I feel like I could just anti-differentiate, you know, really quickly. And what am I anti-differentiating? Technically, this is really, this is just something to the 10th power. You know what I mean? This is just something to the 10th power. And I'm imagining that I'm using the reverse power rule. And the reverse power rule says to find out what the power is and then to add one to it. And then to do the antiderivative, I end up with x to the 11th divided by that new power, right? So that's what I want to do. And I'm just going to pretend like this was just an x. This thing right here was just an x. So here we go. Oh, here's my x. Here's my power of 11. And I'm finding my antiderivative and I'm dividing by that 11. And remember, there's a one third out in front and that is because I had to add it so that I could undo that chain rule piece. Undo that chain rule piece. And the one third just stays there. All right, and so on the inside here, what do I have? I have three X minus a one, and that's my answer. Uh, don't forget plus C. Okay, and technically some of you are going to be bothered by all those fractions, so let's just combine them. So one third times one over eleven is going to be one thirty three. So I have the answer is one over thirty three and a three x minus one to the eleventh plus a C. There you go. I know you could tell I didn't have enough room, so let's just give ourselves a little bit more room. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say for sure that I want to find the chain rule piece of everything. You know, once you know what the chain rule piece is, if you can find it and you can, you know, deal with it. Oops, there we go. 
um, then you should be able to take the antiderivative really quick. All right, so let me do um, just the which one of these is my chain rule piece. Just take a look and see if you can see it. I'm hoping that you saw that 3t squared right away and you're like, oh, that must be the derivative of t cubed. You know what I mean? You, you, you probably have that memorized. So let's just take a look. d dx of t cubed plus t squared is going to be 3t squared plus 2t. So this is my chain rule piece, okay? That's my chain rule piece. And when I undo the derivative, that is just going to disappear. Take a look here. Which one of these things is the chain rule piece? Oh, this one's a little bit harder to see. D dx of 4x cubed minus 5 is going to be the derivative of 4x cubed. Well, shoot, that already is a derivative. You mean I have to take the derivative again? Yes, I'm going to take the derivative again. So that's going to be 12t plus 0. You know, I don't need that plus 0. I wish I had a 12 t sorry 12 x okay uh square oh <laughs> let me try this again derivative of 4x cubed is 12 x squared i don't know what i was looking at there you go oh well there's my chain rule piece uh i wishing that it was 12 so now i'm making it 12 and when i do undo the derivative that will just disappear okay down here which, what's the chain rule piece? Uh, yeah, you're not alone in wondering the answer to that. So I don't see a chain rule piece, and this is just something that's squared. So, you know, well, let's, let's find a different tactic. Use the boxes. We'll get this done pretty quick. I don't see the chain rule in that one. Um, so here we go. Ooh, what's the chain rule piece on this one? Um, the derivative should just be 4. I'm missing a 4, so I'm going to add a 4. So I'm going to have a 4 out in front, I'm going to have a 1 fourth here, and then the rest of this is just going to come out of sign of 4x, and I'm going to dx. And I'm going to say that when I'm done taking the derivative, that 4 is just going to disappear. All right. How about this one? Oh, um, okay, so theta is squared, not cosine, theta. If I wanted to do cosine that was squared, you would see it like that, right? So it's not that, not cosine squared. Theta, I can spell theta. Theta is squared. So that's the inside function, d, d, theta theta being squared, I sure wish that I had a 2 theta in front, but what I have is a 3 theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this cosine theta squared is now going to have a 2 in front of it. Ah, and I know I heard you. I can hear you from here. There's supposed to be a 3 in front of it as well. Too many constants. I have an extra constant. Okay, listen. That 2 is going to disappear when I take the derivative. Not even going to use, not even going to worry about it. What's going to stay is that one half. All right, take a look at this. What's my inside function, my outside function? I have a composition of functions here, and I have something extra. <laughs> okay, technically, sine is squared, and here is where you would actually write it like that, which means my inside function is sine. Like, how did you know that it wasn't the cosine? Well, because there was a power there. It, it, there had to have been, I just probably it was sine cubed, right? And so I'm wishing that there'll be some more constants here. I'll figure that part out later. But just to make sure that I know what the chain rule piece is, and you think you can see it, I'm thinking that it's this. Let's take the derivative of sine. Oh, yeah. No, it's cosine. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the problem. Um... I'm going to rewrite the problem. Okay, I mean, I could say that 
that chain rule piece is just going to disappear. Yeah, let's just say that chain rule piece is going to disappear, but I wanted to write it in red. That's all. So I wanted to write that chain rule piece right here. Cosine of x, that's my chain rule piece. And then what I have here is I have sine of x, which is squared, and a dx. And obviously I want to fix that missing two, uh, three, missing three here, but I'll get to it in a minute. All right, so we've identified the chain rule pieces and we've written down what's basically going to disappear that we want to make sure that it's gone when we're done. Uh, and so I've got my chain rule piece identified and I'm tempted now when I tell you that it just it just goes away. Um, I want you to know that it doesn't go away right now. It goes away when I've undone the derivative. And so there's a little thing right here which is that this whole thing must have been to a power because it still exists, okay? I wasn't just taking the derivative of t to the fourth and t cubed by itself. Do you see what I mean? Otherwise, I wouldn't have generated that chain rule piece. Now, what I've done here is I've taken the derivative of something and I have a power of one that's left, which means that I had something to the first power because I'm done. It means that I took the derivative of something to the second power. So n equals one and n plus one equals two. And so now I say that I'm going to have the derivative, the antiderivative is going to end up being, ready, it's t cubed plus t squared. And that was to the square the power of 2, only I'm dividing by that 2, okay? And by the way, if this is confusing for you and you don't like what I just did, you're like, I'm not sure that I get that, uh, I kind of feel you. This is, this is a harder problem to kind of conceptualize when you're still learning the process. So I will mention you have an alternate route to doing the antiderivative of this. Uh, you just have something times something here, and so if you wanted to do some boxes, and then just get the t terms all by themselves and there's no powers left over then you certainly could do the integral this way ready okay here let's watch that like 2t and then t cubed and t squared and so you had 3t to the fifth and uh, 2t to the fourth and uh, 3t to the fifth and then we had a t a 2t cubed now this feels weird right here. These guys match. t cubed and t squared is t to the fifth. There's a three in front. t to the fourth. There we go. I fixed it. I knew one of those was off. And then I'm going to combine like terms. That makes sense that I can do that. And so I'm saying I really have the integral of, oh, the integral of 3t to the fifth plus 5t to the eighth. So don't change that exponent and then a 2t t, t cubed and all of that now is just simple reverse power rule and so i'm saying that i have the integral of 3t to the fifth is going to be uh, 3t to the sixth divided by six plus uh, 5t to the fifth divided by five plus 2t to the fourth divided by four uh, plus a c and uh, let me simplify that that's t to the sixth over two plus t to the fifth plus t to the fourth over two plus c you know how do i know that my answer over there is the same as my answer over here well i could expand it out and then find out whether or not it was and so uh, i'm telling you there's a moment with integrals and sometimes with derivatives too where you're like did i get the right answer and you just have to ask me now i leave it to you why don't you try and expand that and see whether or not you get the right answer and if you do great uh and 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 we know we did it correctly um Okay, so you could see, I, I definitely got the same thing. And um, by the way, 
Isn't it funny how there was a moment in time where you didn't know that this thing was equal to that thing, right? You're like, oh, I didn't even really, I never really thought about expanding it like that. I never really thought of it. Because it just looks better when it's t cubed plus t, t, t squared. The whole thing is squared. The whole thing is divided by two. So don't stress. I'm sure you're doing it right, but you can always ask me, okay? And I did it in this these two different methods. I did it in these two different methods so you could feel comfortable with either one. I don't care which, right? But we are going to practice stuff with the powers, uh, you know, inside function, outside function powers in just a couple of moments here. So let's do this one. I'm sorry, but this one's going to be a lot easier, right? It's just, it's, this one's just not as, as difficult. So I have that, that, mm, why am I not grabbing the right color pen? I have that uh, leftover piece that I use the chain rule. This part of the chain rule disappears, and I'm saying that the antiderivative of sine is going to end up being cosine, and technically it's a negative cosine, and there's my 4x, and there is a plus c. Now notice how many parentheses I used here. It's very important that you use that many parentheses because I'm not subtracting sign. I'm multiplying one fourth and a hidden invisible numero uno. So if you you know wanted to write the answer like this, negative one fourth with that that cosine of four x plus c, then you would be good. And remember here that I'm telling you this that the the derivative the dx of of, of cosine of x will generate a negative sign of x and I didn't have a negative and so that's why I had to create the negative when I wanted to and you're like wait a minute but I'm in the mode where I'm memorizing integrals Ms. Chatra, why are you telling me that about derivatives all right the integral then of sine is supposed to be negative cosine and so if you have that rule me memorized that's why we got the negative all right so we're all done with that nine and oh I guess I didn't do seven I was supposed to go down okay well I apologize so now we're doing seven and hmm. so the two and the six x squared that part just disappears that's nice but I still don't really even know how to integrate that that piece right 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 here you know I still don't even really know what I'm doing there so let's rewrite this just a little bit okay so I'm saying that I have a one half and that's my chain rule piece that I generated. And then I have this other chain rule piece, which is 12x squared. And that part's going to just disappear because I, I it came from me doing a chain rule. But this, oops, black here. This is really 4x cubed minus 5. And I have that to the 1 half power. Okay, so when I do the integral of that, I had, uh, you know, n equaled one half, and so n plus one equal three halves. And remember how what we end up doing is we divide by that three halves, uh, but there's a one on top, and then we're dividing by that three halves. So that's really the same thing as one times two thirds, which means I could just put the two thirds out in front. Uh, I'm already going to have a one half there because remember not to lose that chain rule piece that we inserted there was a missing constant now we have it and then also i'm generating this two thirds here because i'm going to have something to the three halves power and that something is four x cubed minus five and remember i already told you that part was going to disappear because I, that was my chain rule piece these guys cancel out and i now have my answer is one third and this is four x cubed minus five to the three halves power plus a c and yes i will tell you if you forget the plus c you do lose points the calculus there's a certain limit you know that you, you get it there's a certain limit to things that you can leave off you know stuff like uh is it equal to or is it just less than or is it less than equal to or is it just less than you know those kinds of things are considered trivial and we don't care about that but that plus c means that you understand that there's a family of answers and that we just don't know what that y-intercept was because it was a constant when we took the derivative that disappeared. So now let's take a look at number eight. Yes, I'm going to do them in order now. Um, again, I told you I was missing the chain rule piece. The chain rule piece would have been uh, the derivative of uh, y cubed plus 1 
if that was my interior function, I should see a 3y squared somewhere, or at least a y squared. I don't see that, so we just have to do the boxes anyway, you know? This is missing. So we're going to use the boxes, and I just showed you that. All right, now, how many of these, you know, boxes-like problems are you going to get? Not very many on the test for me. Um, there's just a chance that you might see something like that on the AP exam, but it would just be one problem, all right? All right, so I'm taking the derivative. I'm going to use purple because it's pretty. y to the 6 plus y cubed plus y cubed plus 1. I'm combining like terms. So what I'm really doing here is the integral of... And I'll just do it all in purple. y to the 6th plus 2y cubed plus 1. And there's my dy. And you're basically just practicing the power rule right now. The reverse power rule. So I have y to the 7th over 7. I have 2y cubed over y to the 4th. And I have 1y. The power is 1, so it's technically over 1. But you just don't write that. Oh man, I'm sorry. I said over 4. Okay, there we go. And uh, if I simplified this, it would be y to the 7th over 7 plus 1 half y cubed plus y. And oh my god, don't forget the plus 3 is so important. There you are. I accidentally already did 9, so we are on 10. And I'm looking in here and I'm saying I have my missing chain rule piece and I have that constant of of a three that was already there. You know that three is making me mad. It's super duper. I do not like it. I want to move it out. <laughs> three times one half. Three times one half is going to be three halves. So my new constant that's out in front is three halves. And then I'm going to do the integral. And here's the integral. The two. Oh, I wanted to do two in red because that was my chain rule piece, my missing chain rule piece. And there's a cosine of theta squared and a d theta and i'm telling you when i take the antiderivative you are going to be amazed ready it's three halves what's the antiderivative of cosine it is sine of theta plus c and is it really that easy yeah oh it was squared there you go yeah so that's it so coming back to this problem we say we know that the chain rule piece you can see it in front is cosine of x that's awesome I have something that is, is to a power right here. And so I want to say that um, n equals 2, and so n plus 1 will equal 3. So my antiderivative of something squared will be something cubed, and it'll be divided by 3. There'll be a plus c here. And the thing that I'm anti-differentiating ready was sine of x. The cosine x piece just disappears because it was the chain rule piece. That wasn't all of it, though. We did have just a little bit more. Use substitution for more complicated integration problems. Simple rules might not suffice. And pause this. Could you please read all of it? And I'll come back. Okay, so now that you've read that, I'm going to tell you we definitely want to make sure that we follow this process. And um, if you're wondering to yourself, well, how am I going to know when I need to use this process? Let's let's take a look at each one of these problems, and um, and I think I'll be able to give you like a hint as to why. Okay, so first of all, with this problem, I'm noticing that the inside function. Um, would be x minus 1 and the derivative of that I'm sorry it's just 1 so what the heck why is there an x out here that is not helpful to me I'm not excited about it I don't want it to be there okay and then for this next one um, I'm saying that I want to uh, take the derivative of the inside piece that div inside piece d dx of 2x plus 3 should just be a 2 and I have more than a 2 okay I have a, a 2 and so so 
I'm seeing that I have this extra piece then at 2x minus 1 in here, and I don't know why. That's not, that, I didn't want that to be there. I'd like it to disappear. So I'll mention to you in both of these cases, what I'm, what I have that's problematic is some kind of x, uh, some kind of x. And it turns out u substitution means that I'm going to turn everything into powers of u, and I'm going to integrate with respect to u, and then I'm going to plug back in whatever I thought I was setting u equal to. All right, so I talked about these derivatives, and I don't actually need them. Uh, I was thinking about them, and I was looking at them, and I was realizing that I have this, like, power of x, and that's a problem for me. So what I want to say now is that the process for u substitution is always going to be set u equal to the inside function. Okay, and then in this case, because I have that extra x out there, I can actually solve for x. So I've solved for u, and it's going to be this guy. And let me rewrite it over here just so that we don't lose it. u is equal to x minus 1, but then I'm going to solve it for x, and I'm going to say now that x equals u plus 1. And now I'm going to substitute this piece and this piece. And for a while, you're not going to really recognize it. And so these will be the ones you probably asked me to do on the homework, okay? So let's take a look at this. I'm saying I now have this new integral where x, oh, should I have done this in two different colors? I should have. Um, x is just u plus 1. It's just u plus 1. And then u uh, is x minus 1. So here is a square root and an x minus 1, whoops, turns into just a u. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Um, oh, hold on a second. Take the derivative of u. You get a du, and you will end up getting a dx, because the derivative of x is dx. This is called im, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to point here. This is implicit differentiation and you're thinking to yourself maybe you're saying okay wait a minute Shatra, when we took a d dx we usually have a thing on the top and we have a thing on the bottom so if I said like I said say that I had you know y squared plus x squared plus 5 equals you know x you're like you get a dy um, dx and a 2x, you get a 2x and a dx dx. Why are we not doing something over something and something over something? Well, I'm taking the derivative um, with respect to x on all of these, and I have two different variables. But if everything is solved on one side, like y equals, you know, 6x plus 4, if I just take the derivative, I can just say this is a dy, and I can just say this, this is a, a dx, and then plus a 4. I'm not trying to solve for a dy dx. Uh, I don't know if that was helpful, but I just kind of wanted to point it out. In this case, we just say u, the derivative of u is du, and x x, the derivative of, uh, of x is dx, and that allows me to substitute for this piece right here. And you're like, oh, well, dx is the same thing as du, so we're going to do a straight thing. Now, in a, in a problem coming up, when I take the derivative and I get my dx, I might actually have to solve for dx. We're going to generate those missing chain rule constants, and you'll see it in just a moment. All right, so now, I don't know. Did that help? I mean, look at what this mess that I have here. I have u to the one-half power. This is u to the one-half power, and, and I still have this u to the first power and a 1, and I have the du, and I'm just not sure that this really helped me much. It, it, it's in the book, so I'm going over it. All right. Do you recognize it now that I need to distribute that one-half power? If I distribute that one-half power, then what I really have is the integral ready, the integral of u. Um, remember, the rule is a to the m plus, I mean, sorry, times a to the n is the same thing as a to the m plus n. So I'm trying to add these exponents, okay? I'm trying to add those exponents. So I'm saying that I have 1 plus 1 half, which is going to be 3 halves. So I have u to the 3 halves, and don't forget to distribute that one, that u to the 1 half over here. And since we're just multiplying that by 1, it's still just u to the 1 half. And all this 
this is a du now i can integrate this this isn't hard ready so we get um u to the five halves and uh, i'm dividing by five halves and remember if you have one divided by five halves you end up having one divided by five halves which is the same thing as one times two fifths so i just put the two fifths here and i move on and we're doing that process over here as well i had one divided by one half which is going to be one divided by one half which is the same thing as one times two to the one so i have a two and a u Oh, sorry, whoops, this is supposed to be three halves, my bad. But I think you feel the, the pattern, right? Just flip it, flip that power, and write it down in front. And then plus a C. And that is my answer. But I have to put back in what U was. U was this, is X minus 1. So here we go, we say have two-fifths, and X minus 1 is to the five-halves. We have two thirds, and x minus one is to the three halves, and then there's plus a c, and I am happy as long as this looks like a minus a one. And you're like, I just don't know. That didn't really help me. And I, I feel you. In fact, I think that we've been looking at this kind of stuff long enough that we should be able to just distribute this x. You know what I mean? Can't we do that? Well, I mean. I think I can. I'm going to give it a shot. Let me just take this and I'm going to do it right here. The integral of x. I'm saying that I wish that x had a one half power. If x had a one half power, well, let's, let's do this. Is that a one half power? Now I have x and it has a one half power. And remember that our rule is a to the m times a, to, well, take the, the n, Take a to the m to the power of n means that you do this, m times n. And so let's double check that. 2 times 1 half is the same thing as 1. And that's what I started out with. There was a hidden invisible exponent of 1. So I'm thinking I did the right thing here. And now that they have the same, um, since they have the same power, they have the same power here, and they have the same power here, does that mean that I can just do this, that I could say that I have x squared times x minus 1, and the whole thing is to the 1 half power? It turns out that's what it does mean. And you're like, oh, I don't think I've ever seen that. And I'm telling you, I totally get it that you've never seen that before, because I was doing a Khan Academy practice the other day for Math 2, and I saw it. I saw them do something like this, and I was like, wow, I never thought of that. That's a brilliant idea. And so... Um, I'm using it now. You know, Khan Academy. He was he was a you know he was teaching his buddy his uh, cousins, you know calculus, and so he's always got calculus on his mind. How do I teach this so that a kid would be better at calculus? Is brilliant, you know. It's just brilliant. All right. So anyway, then that means that this is really the integral of uh, x uh, cubed minus x squared and then I got to a one-half power and there's my dx and now I realize you know I'm missing the chain rule piece I mean I'm, I'm missing it it's just straight missing so this actually didn't help me at all unfortunately And so I was tempted actually to, you know, cut this out of the video, me getting to this point. Um, but I'm going to leave it in. And here's why. Because you are going to think you can do something like that. You know what I mean? You're like, does this help? And you might go down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out how to integrate this thing. And then when you get here, you're like, dang it, it didn't help. And then you're frustrated and you say, oh, I just give up. You know, it's too hard. No, the fact of the matter is that... Um, you know, we are like Newton right now when we're trying to figure out the answer to an integral and we try to go down this rabbit hole and then we just, you know, we got to a bad place and then we just pick ourselves up again and we say, well, maybe I'll try a different way. And that's why they are calculus gods. These guys, they made these mistakes and then they kept going. And I really hope that you do that too. I, I love you all. And I just want you to know how proud of you I am. And that this part, you know, is going to feel really hard for a while. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you that you need to see all the tricks. And once you've seen the tricks, you'll start to remember them. But you kind of need to see the tricks like 10 times before you really start to master them. Okay?
So anyway, uh, for number 13, again, I'm going to say I see that uh, I'm missing the chain rule piece. I have something that's, you know, a an, an X. I just have a random X and I don't like it. So I'm going to set U, here we go. I'm going to set U equal to 2X plus 3. And I'm going to do uh, the derivative of that. And the derivative of that is DU, um, which uh, equals 2 DX. And by the way, I mentioned to you that I want to solve for DX. So DX now equals equals du over 2. I'm going to use that substitution. It's very important. Over here, I'm going to say that I actually even want to solve for x. So I have uh, u minus 3 equals 2x, and I'm going to divide by 2. And I'm going to say that x equals um, u minus 3 over 2, and, or it, you know, x might be better for me to do u over 2 minus 3 halves. We'll see which one I end up using when I get there. All right, so then I'm coming in here and I'm reorganizing this integral. So I don't like the 2x minus 1. Um, that really is a bummer for me. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that I'm replacing 2x minus 1. I'm replacing that x with this u over 2 minus the 3 halves. And uh, then I'm going to distribute that to... And look, that's easy. I end up with a u minus a 3, and then there's a minus a 1 on the outside. So this is u minus a 1. And that's what I have on top now is u minus a 1. Um, only down here in the bottom, I had something to the ninth power. And that something to the ninth power, I could turn that into a negative ninth power. And that something was 2x plus 3. And I'm just calling that u now, okay? And then I end up getting uh, this dx needs to be replaced. And I'm doing this in red. dx is really du over 2. du over 2. And you know how I do. I'm going to move that constant out to the front because I find it very distracting to have it in there. Okay? So I'm going to say that this is really ready the integral of uh, 1 half. There was some sort of missing constant. I figured out what that was. And then in here, um, I'm going to distribute that u to the negative ninth. And so let me think about that for a second. I have u times u to the negative ninth. There's a hidden invisible one here, and I'm supposed to add those exponents. It just happens to be that one of those exponents is negative, so it ends up being a subtraction problem. And so now I say that I have u to the negative, oh, sorry, <laughs> u to the negative eight, eight powers what I end up having. So this is u to the negative 8. And then I'm distributing that negative 9 to uh, that u to the negative 9th to a negative 1. And so now I have a negative u, u to the negative 9th. And then there's a du. And I took care of that constant. Okay. I can use a reverse power rule here. I totally know how to do this. And so I'm going to say that I have 1 half and the antiderivative of u to the negative 8th. Remember, I had n equal negative 8. And so n plus 1 means that I have negative 8 plus 1, which is negative 7. And so I'm saying that I have u to the negative 7 over negative 7. And then I have a minus sign here because I had uh, this u to the negative 9th. So n equals negative 9 and n plus 1 equals negative 9 plus 1, which is negative 8. And so I have u to the negative 8 divided by negative 8. And then there's a plus c. And I'd really like to be done now, but I have to put that, that u back in there. I have to put that, the, I mean, sorry, I have to put that x back in there. This, remember, this was 2x plus 3. So already my answer is 1 half times I'm saying that I have u. Oh, sorry, u was a 2x plus a 3, and it's all over that negative 7, and here's a negative 7. And then there's this next piece where I have, um, it's over negative 8, and that's the 2x plus 3, and it's to the negative 8 power, and then there's a plus c, and I, I'm going to leave it, right? Because if it was a, if it was a, a free response question I could be done, but you and I both know that when we do these kinds of problems, they're really just multiple choice problems. So let's let's go ahead and see if we can't sort this all out. This is going to be negative um, one over ready fourteen times x two x plus three to the seventh power, and then this is going to be uh, one. Oh, sorry, a negative one 
here's my 16, and this is a 2x plus 3, and that is to the 8th power. And where did the 14 and the 16 come from? 1 half times uh, 1 seventh is 1 14th, and 1 half times 1 over 8 is a 1 over 16. And so that's where those, const those, those constants come from. Here's my plus C, and ta-da, there's your final answer. Are we done? Did we finish? Yay. Good luck on the homework.